No, I can't laugh. <laughs> People have always told me I'm a positive person with a great outlook in life. I am definitely what you would call a glass half full kind of gal, and I always try to find the silver lining in everything. As cliche as it sounds, I would say that my motto would be to live, laugh and love. And the reason I am able to be like this is because of all the positive people that surround me with their inspiring stories. And what I want to do is give them a voice and to share them with you. Welcome to Candy Camera. I'm Candy and here today we have the beautiful Claire joining me to tell us her story. Claire suffered from a life-altering shriek at just the age of 19 years old. Doctors were preparing her family for the worst as they feared that she wouldn't make it. Against all odds she survived and underwent years of physiotherapy to learn how to walk, read and write again. And here she is today to tell us her story. Hello and welcome to the... It's okay. No. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Candy Camera. Today my guest is Claire! Hello. Woo! Welcome, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us today. So, um, we're going to talk about your stroke today. Um, you've been through a lot. And oh, yeah. I think that we need to get out there the awareness of everything and just spread how positive you are as well. Because you are such an amazing person. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, we will start with, um, so tell us what exactly is a stroke? Um, because from what I know, it's just the advert on the TV, you know, when someone has a stroke, their face falls, their speech is gone, and yeah. that's all I really know, so inform us. Well, the easy way of remembering, I mean, we have, the, there's different words for uh, the different types of strokes out there, but yeah. it's blood clot and a bleed, that's the main ones, um, and for me, I had the bleed. Okay, in the brain. Yeah, yeah. Not in the leg. No. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us first, um, what life was like before you had your stroke? Um, so yeah, before, before my stroke, um, I had a lot of mates, uh, enjoyed oh. school, Yeah. Um, played a lot of football um, from the age of six to 19. Nice. Um, also enjoyed things like art and... and Art Attack, you may yeah. know that, Art yeah. Attack. Art Did Attack, you? we all love Art Attack, yeah. We love a bit of Art Attack. <laughs> Most of these days, no, um, So, but also, um, I had a, a fantastic role model. Yeah. Uh, and that's my dad. Yeah. Um, so, unfortunately, um, that he passed away when I was 15. Mm. So, that was a lot of stress going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but I remember everything mm -hmm. uh, as childhood is very memorable yeah so i remember everything relating with him so but it was very um i'm very grateful yes positive yes very grateful that i got that moment with him yeah so in all in general you were fit and healthy before you had your stroke you mm. didn't smoke or anything like that no n not at all um I did. I did i was very healthy from the, the football get background i was very athletic um and I was playing football for probably two times or three times a week. Yeah. So I was very healthy. Yeah, yeah. Um. So it came to a massive mm -hmm. surprise. When yeah. I was, when and I was. that's kind of what we're stressing is that you anyone can have a stroke. You know, you, it's not down to anything. It's no. Just... No. I mean, we can all talk about risk factors. Yeah, of course, of course. But I mean, there's nothing saying that you know you can't. Yeah. You can't. Um, okay, so tell us what happened when you actually leading up to your stroke and when you had your stroke. You can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Claire. Oh God, I was just thinking how <laughs> adorable my dog was, yeah. and then I went. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is Benny, by the way. Oh, he's my cute. yes, yes, this is my little companion. Yeah, he's a cute. Um, he is. So yeah, no. So tell us what actually happened leading up to a stroke and when you had your stroke so what actually happened yeah no so it was it was um a trip to to london um and i didn't think you know stroke was ahead of me or anything no um so it was just with my mum and her friends and my friend um and 
it all started when I was in the underground. Um, so I can remember seeing my, you know, in between the carriages, and you've got that 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 screen. Yeah. I can remember looking at my face, thinking yeah. there's something not right. I was oh, looking really? at the reflection. Yeah. Thinking, something's not right. You didn't feel right inside. No, no. I mean, we all know. Um, you know, we we know ourselves best, and I knew something wasn't right. And saying that, when um, we went for something to eat to hopefully make me feel better, um, I saw an ambulance and I thought, that ambulance is maybe for me. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, maybe I need to say I'm not feeling great. Yeah. Um, but I didn't listen to my instinct. No. Because um, I'm, I'm stubborn. Yeah. So. That's the thing, we should on. listen to our body, shouldn't we? When, well, yeah. yeah. Sometimes we need to rest or anything. We should listen. I think a lot of people have the definitely have a way of ignoring what their body's actually telling them. Yeah, and I'm I'm worse for doing that when my yeah. body's like, it's taken a long time for me to say, okay, Clay, you're really tired. You need to lay down. Yeah, yeah. So of course, and it's really important that yeah. you do that. And and with anyone, anyone, yeah, anyone, anyone, anyone in general. Yeah. So um yeah, I went for sanctuary and went to the bathroom and fortunately was sick quite a lot yeah um but at that moment when I was in the cubicle I I can remember that the 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 cubicle walls felt like they were closing in oh that's horrible yeah and then I felt like the light that was all the way up there uh was like just literally cooking me yeah like a chicken it's crazy isn't it so everything's just coming in on you I guess yeah I know it's just it's honestly the strangest feeling you would only be able to say I've been there if you were in that moment. It's always like a nightmare, it. like a, you can imagine like a film or something, like a, it's like oh, a nightmare. Yeah. yeah, it's really weird, didn't even think it's scary. Could feel yeah. So, um, and that's when I said, I need to go home. Yeah. Um, and that was the moment where I lost like my my walking, my movements, um, the crowds felt all muffled yeah. and, and distant, even mm-hmm. though it was like a busy it's underground. Busy London, yeah. Yeah. So people were thinking I was dehydrated, leaving me a shop where I'll drink. <laughs> I know. I could have opened my own shop. <laughs> yeah, water shop. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> um, but what really was was hard and took me some time to come to terms with was that when the ambulance did arrive they thought it was anxiety because my age really? and where I was yeah it's crazy so, isn't it yeah that knocked me definitely for sex I yeah. didn't feel I didn't feel reassured or comfortable at yeah. that moment so so did so then you went to hospital but you did go to hospital but you weren't rushed in no that right no, I wasn't. I wasn't rushed in at all. They were giving us a whole tour, oh. so I could give you a whole tour of London. Now. Yeah, uh, is MI six? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I had a whole tour of London, and it wasn't fast at all. I was left in the side of the corridor yeah. on the chair, and then I was I was taken to the the waiting room where I then slumped and my mum was like hang on a minute yeah that's like not right right. yeah okay and then you did you just wake up the next thing you remember is that waking up then after that or wow well um i yeah i totally blacked out yeah and i can remember little snippets of the day um from being going into the ct scan um talking to my consultant um and i remember I'm not I'm not sure I'd say this, but I remember when I was in the cubicle, uh, they were trying to put me put a pad on me. Oh really? For a nineteen year old, it was yeah. like no way, Jose. Yeah, no. Definitely. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those <laughs> moments. <laughs> I know, but it's weird. Like you're young, you don't know what's going on, and it's yeah, you associate pads with like old people, don't you? Well, yeah, yeah. So. It was just like no, I'm not, that's not happening. Yeah. 
Yeah, so um, so you woke up and then you were told that you'd had a stroke after. Yes, yeah. Um, and so basically, because of uh, the taking so long, I, I lost that 4.5 hours. Right. They were rushing to try to fill that, that literal half an hour gap and they gave me the de-bursting drug. Right. Um, and that makes you bleed. Makes you, when you have a clot with um, the de-clotting drug, it bursts it to make you bleed more. Right. So with me, because it was a bleed, and who was already bleeding, so that made it worse. Made it worse, yeah. Gosh. So I had a second one. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that was that was another thing. Never yeah. heard of that. I had a come to terms with. Yeah. But I got and, it. and was it you were saying before they gave you the wrong scan? Yes, and and I mean, because of that sh- shortage as well of the time. Yeah. Um. And I think you know with um i think we kind of like all are aware that with things that cost as well yeah they yeah, are less course. reluctant to use, to it. use it so with a, a scan like um an mri which is more in-depth picture they didn't use they use the yeah. ct which is very basic okay more basic and so. is that when they so when was the point that they actually realized that you were having the stroke do you know um I I don't know. I think I was blacked out at that moment. Out, yeah. I think it was just literally where they say when you don't have a voice, someone talks for yeah. you. I was very lucky to have my mum there yeah, of at that moment. So you woke up and then you would you know you'd realise that you'd had a stroke then. Yeah. As they told you. Yeah. And then that was the beginning of the recovery wound. Wow. Yeah. Woo. It was a very long one. Not a very long one. A very long one. Still going. Still going. But, um, but amazing that you are still going. Yeah. And yeah. The, and the, even now you're still recovering, aren't you? So you're telling yes. me the nerves are still waking up now. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, just the other night, um, you heard me go. <gasps> yeah. No. So you know it's still there. Yeah. But it's a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say you know. We underestimate nerve damage. Yeah. It's extremely painful. Yeah. Um, I was hospitalised for two weeks where my n- nerves were dead from the stroke and then woke up. Yeah. Um, so it would feel like my arm was like this, like you'd see it. Yeah. But to me, it would feel like it was getting snapped in half. It's crazy, but isn't you it? You couldn't read it. You couldn't express that. It no. was just like, is, is it psychological? Is it yeah. like, you know? But it's a way you're trying to get. Like meditate, yeah, and to understand that you know it's it's okay. Yeah. So we'll talk about your recovery. So you like you say you were in the hospital for two weeks, and then when mm. you came home, you basically had to start over again, didn't you? Like a baby, you couldn't pretty walk. much. Yeah, I was. Uh, I had a crawl. Uh, I couldn't stand. Um, I even struggled to um, you know move chair, to, move chair to chair. Um, mm. And things like that. It was it was very it's a very hard moment. I used all my financial money to you know to pay for the physios privately because yeah. I was getting less treatments from right. NHS eventually. Mm-hmm. So and you wanted to keep going, and yeah. you did, and now you're oh, you're yeah. running now, aren't you? I know. I, to run. I know. It's starting to feel my time. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. So um, you had a few little um, operations as well, didn't you? So you had lots of physiotherapy, mm-hmm. and then the operation that was your eye? Yes, um, I had an operation on this eye. Um, I had a weight put in. Don't know if you can see it. I had yeah. a weight put in. Right there, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a lot of people know that's a good pipe trick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and then I had my eyeball taken out. Yeah. And put back in and that is crazy isn't I know it? it's really weird it's not like I was sitting on the side yeah. just chilling yeah <laughs> <laughs> looking um, over there while you were looking <laughs> over here yeah. ooh <laughs> um, but yeah no, so I and I had Botox put in my eyeball which was quite free Botox yeah well yes yeah. <laughs> I have that in my face as well now yeah. so yeah I had uh, also a neurostimulation mm-hmm. um, that would go on my face um and unfortunately it was private it cost quite a bit of money but it it did did the work yeah to a certain degree um and then it stopped and that's when the 
um, NHS helped me by giving me free Botox. So really? That's really good. <laughs> so the simulation lovely, so that was you had to do that every day yes. for two and a half hours, is that right? Two and a half hours. Every single day. Yeah, and basically so that just... wakes up the muscles and Yeah. So basically like you know the the tummy muscles. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was basically exactly what I had to put on the face, but a miniature one. A miniature one, yeah. Um so don't put it too up too high. Yeah. You know about it. <laughs> and you suffered a depression as well, you're yeah. saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, things have got a lot better now. Yeah. But I, I do have a natural depression because of the breakage in the circuit of my brain. Okay. Um, so, I, I have suffered with um, suicidal thoughts. And right at the beginning of my stroke, I did consider attempting suicide. Yeah. Not something I want to be announcing. No, no. Um, and it was but very we hard. have to talk about these things because it's so important. Yeah, not a lot of people talk no. about it. And I've got to a stage where I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable to talk about yeah. it. Um, but obviously, with my my mum, you know, you have to go through PIP assessments for financially, for financial reasons. And for my mum to first hear them from my lips. And to see me when I was crying and breaking down, that was a realization that she she didn't have a clue. Yeah. Because you, you we all put fun, fronts on, of course. You know. So. Because you, you, you were saying before that you were sort of that was the time where you grieved for your dad also. Yes, you know, it was really it was, I was accepting who I I was slowly, and I was going through recovery. But it was also the grieving. Um, things then became silent after my stroke. So, you know, I no longer had a job. I no longer was seeing friends. I had those four walls. Um, and I had no choice but to be with my thoughts. And that's where my mental health came in. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, that's where my grieving yeah. came in. But it needed to happen. Of course. Um, so yeah, it was a really, it was a tough time. Yeah. But one person you had to help you through all that was Mr. Benny. This energetic fella. Benny. Yeah. <laughs> but Benny. yes, um, he has been an absolute diamond. So this is my dog, Benny. Um, and I got him literally the day after my stroke. Um, he was, funny enough, he was... Um, Born with a lack of oxygen in his head, so we were steering each other from direction to direction when we were learning to walk. But <laughs> so you're twins. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. But we've been through a lot, haven't we? He yes. is basically a service dog. Yeah, he's, he's been a there with you. Yeah, he's, he's a therapy dog, dog, definitely. Mm -hmm. I want to touch on as well how amazing Benny was with your mum. So tell us about yes. that. Yeah, um, he. My mum had um, two bouts of cancer, so she had lung and she had um, she had bowel cancer as well. And um, Benny was just laying on top of her tummy. And though she had symptoms, um, you don't really think much of it at the time. Yeah, so this is before you knew she had cancer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he knew. He knew. So it is amazing. Dogs thanks are to so him. Amazing. Well done, Benny. You're a good boy. Oh, look at yes, that energetic, are. energetic face. What would they do without you? Okay. Right. So he's an old boy now. He's yeah. he's getting on to ten. But yeah, he's been my little companion. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us now. So sort of how do you feel like the difference between your good days and your bad days, and how you stay positive? On, even on the bad days. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my, my days are a lot better now. Um, I keep active. Um, Joe Wicks, hot stuff. He is, um, it. He is isn't he? So, <laughs> why? Like, you know, if we could create a man that looked so good, he's got that best hand, the lush hair. <laughs> I hope you're watching. The great Joe. body. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Joe, if you see this, my number. No, Joe. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and I also uh, 
do a lot of activities like stand up paddle boarding. Amazing. Which you have had the Yeah, I had a go last week or a couple of weeks ago, was it? Yes. Yeah, yeah that was interesting, folks. If you ever get to see Laura paddle boarding, I'm terrible. <laughs> no, you didn't do too bad. You didn't I was do like, bad. you actually got there in the end. I got, got told off by a man. He's like, you're supposed to stand. I was like, have you not seen me trying to stand? <laughs> yeah, anyway, was... If you're watching, man. Positive eyes. Positive eyes. I was trying. I was trying. I did get. I did stand up. It was a bit wobbly. Wasn't yeah, it, it was. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a really mass massive struggle. My mm-hmm. my brother is is very athletic, and even he struggled. Yeah, yeah. sorry. He said he was he was exhausted afterwards. So, and then m- meditation's been a massive thing. I had to understand, learn what had happened to my brain, um, and I had to kind of be able to learn what to reinforce in my brain. Yeah. So like meditation, mindfulness. Um, so do you do meditation? You know I do meditation. I love meditation. Who does it? Well, so if you that. haven't tried meditation, do some guided meditations. It changes your life. It changed we, my life. We did sound meditation the other day. And yeah, with Fern Cotton. That was great. Yeah. My brother really walked good. in and was like, what have I walked into? Yeah. <laughs> but it really does relax your whole body and it just proves that you can control your whole body with your mind. Ah, oh, exactly. Like with anything, like anxiety, yeah. like depression. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, so um, we'll go on now. So for Hope for Stroke. Yeah. So this is your little sort of organisation. My little baby. Yeah, so you work now for the Stroke Association, yeah. don't you? Yes. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's great to work for, you know, your passion to support people. Um, but with Hope for Stroke, I do that voluntary because I get that more involvement mm-hmm. with those, the people that need it the most. Which is so good. So I I really, really enjoy it. So I've uh, made it on Facebook. So if you want to follow me, it's at Hope for Stroke. Hope for Stroke. Follow everybody right now. We'll put links in, you know, down, downstairs, wherever they go. <laughs> downstairs. Downstairs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Links below. We'll, we'll or below or yeah. inside or it's somewhere. Flashing up now Somewhere around screen. here. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> yeah. But it's been a privilege. Thanks for having me. Oh, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> I haven't finished. Oh. Um, but so you're you're trying to um you're gonna try and raise some money and stuff so you can hopefully with hope for strength make it your Yeah. Um it I mean I don't really know where it's going. Yeah. Um because it does what I I enjoy giving um support to So it's people. giving support online to people. Yeah. So I guess it, that money would, would go to um maybe more of my time to be able to do what I can do yeah. for, though, for them. Which is so, amazing, yeah. Yeah, and I would like to publish my own book, but it's taking its time 10 yeah, so years you're later. In, you are, you're, no, but these things do take time. So you're writing your own book and hopefully yeah, one day you'll get your story out there even more. Yeah, it's, it's like great. literally a paragraph night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah take yeah, a long time. Listen often, that's the way to do it. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. What would you say to anyone now who's just had a stroke or starts in their first stages of recovery from mm-hmm. a stroke? Okay, that's not the doorbell. That's a plane. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is what happens. You get distracted yeah. easily. Um, so, yeah, uh, what I would say is don't give up hope. I mean, you know, right at that moment when it just happens, you don't think anything's going to improve yeah. or get better. So I would say don't get give up hope, persevere, um, even when you plateau. Yeah. Um, just keep going to help with your development. Mm-hmm. And you're the perfect example of that because even like we say ten years on, you know, you're still learning and nerves are waking up yeah. and you're still going. So okay. thank you so much for joining us it's today. Been a it's been a privilege. Yeah, it Benny. really has been an absolute pleasure and I hope Everyone can take awareness from this and yeah, positivity, positive vibes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so next we have Candy Slime Box. <laughs> so, in my slime box, and let me just add, this slime box is the most random thing in the world, and it got given to me and my friend on a night out by a random man years ago, and we've kept it, and I just had to get it involved because it always seems to just 
pop up again. Should I be worried? So, um, you should be worried. Okay. Then. Um, so, in this, um, candy slime box, we have lots of different words, with different, um, positive words, we have different topics, and basically, what I want you to do is just to pick one out, and just sort of say what comes to mind when you see the word, okay? Okay. So, okay. Dun, 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 dun. Wow. So, <laughs> what is it? Well, it's a slime box. So, okay. If you want to deep your hand and give it a little rummage, go on, that's it. Get your hand oh! right in. That's, that's so weird. I know. Oh, I should. I, I don't know if I like it or not, if it's disturbing. Okay, so what word have we got? Success. Oh, success. Oh, okay. So, what does success what comes to your mind? You know, it doesn't have to be right. There's no right or wrong. Just answer. success with my journey. Yeah. <laughs> my well, journey. I think that's a great word because Claire <laughs> is a success. That is actually so sweet of you to say it. You are. That's so, really cute. Thank and you. I'm kind of like this because I'm like. To Claire is a success. <laughs> Woo! Thank you so much for watching our video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Please share and like and subscribe downstairs so you never miss an episode.